This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Okay, and welcome to another edition of Hawaii in Uniform. I'm the host, Calvin Griffin. And uh, we've been off for a while, but we're back on now. But um, I want to put a call out there to the members of the veterans community. Uh, we're going to take a slightly different turn with the program here in the future. There's some things that I thought that the public wanted to talk about. I think that we hit on some high notes or some of the things that uh, are of concern. But I'm putting a call for most of, a lot of the people in the veterans community and dependents that if you have an issue that you are of concern to you, that you want more information on, that you think hasn't adequately been addressed by any um, organization or group that you uh, may be associated with, or in general, um, with some of the things that's happening with the VA or other um, entities and such, um, I'd like you to have us give us a call or let us know what's going on. So I want to go ahead and start programming more things so we can get a response from you, things that you want to talk about. Um, and that's basically that's about it right now. Uh, there's a lot of things going on in the um, in the community, and right now we have a gentleman, Mr. Matt McCarville, who's um, been very um, vocal or very uh, instrumental in a lot of different uh, programs that's been happening with the vets. And Matt, you man, if I call you Matt, right? Yeah. Okay, Matt, tell us a little bit about yourself first, your military background, and how you. Um, Came here to Hawaii, or sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, Cal. First, thanks for having me on. And, My pleasure. Uh, thanks for all all that you've been doing to uh, give a voice to uh, to the veteran here in Hawaii. Um, yeah, I uh, I'm a West Point grad, class of '81. Wow. Um, spent 23 years in the Army as an infantryman. Um, combat time was uh, in Special Operations Command, uh, SOC Cent during uh, the Gulf War, hmm. um, the first Gulf War. Oh. And um, yeah, I retired after 23 years yeah. and. Uh, uh, came out here to Hawaii uh, about six years ago. Yeah. yeah. Were you ever stationed over here, active duty? Uh, we were, right. Yeah. Uh, 92 to 96, I was yeah. in the 25th Infantry Division. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, I know that when a lo um, the sense of community, what a lot of vets and military personnel have, you know, getting involved with the community. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the things that you've been involved in, the regatta and a few other um, programs also. But what made you decide to get involved once you, because a lot of times when people retire, uh, it's just like, okay, I'm going to do my thing. I've served my time and that's it, you know. But what made you decide to jump into the fray or try to do more to support your fellow veterans and military personnel? Well, my last job in the Army, I ran the Army ROTC program for Princeton University and the College of New Jersey. Hmm. And uh, a lot of the young men and women that uh, um, were commissioned, Mm -hmm. um, went right to war from there, hmm. whereas I was just about to retire. Right. And um, well, in 2009, I was invited to a soldier ride with the Wounded Warrior Project hmm. down in Florida for three days. Yeah. And uh, I really got to meet up close some of uh, uh, our wounded mm -hmm. um, and got to know them pretty well. And it was a very inspirational uh, three days in Florida. Yeah. Changed my life. Um, I've sort of dedicated the rest of my life um, to working on behalf of wounded and their families and the families of our fallen. Good. Uh, a lot of people are familiar with wounded warriors, but may, there may be a few that may not be familiar with it anyhow. Could you give us a, you know, a brief description of what Wounded Warriors is about and what other organizations are tied in, you know, in a peripheral way? Well, um, first know that I'm not uh, affiliated with the Wounded Warrior Project. Okay. I don't, I'm not an employee. Mm -hmm. uh, the Wounded Warrior Project is a national nonprofit uh, out of Jacksonville, Florida. Mm. Uh, they have employees here in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. uh, their uh, mission is to support and empower uh, this generation of warriors. Yeah. Um, and they are really the, uh, the, the gorilla in the room that has the uh, financial wherewithal to, mm -hmm. to change the way we deliver mental health care yeah. uh, for our wounded. Yeah. Um, now, uh, yeah, so in coming out here to Hawaii, I got involved with the Association of the United States Army. Mm -hmm. Um, on the in, in order to make use of that nonprofit uh, to serve as a checking account to support wounded warrior programs. Okay. Um, and then very shortly thereafter, one of those programs became uh, the Nakoa Wounded Warrior Canoe Regatta. Mm. Um, but in that regard, so AUSA is doing quite a bit of work right. on behalf of our wounded. 
But uh, here in Hawaii, we have several other organizations that do phenomenal work. Mm -hmm. um, national nonprofit Warrior at e Warriors at Ease yeah. uh, teaches yoga for free to our veterans and, and veteran community. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, uh, Access Surf Hawaii has a Wounded Warrior Day at the Beach program. Right. The mission continues, is doing all sorts of work all over the island, uh, volunteering, uh, uh, volunteer, veterans volunteering their time. Right. Um, and I'm probably at Team Red, White, and Blue. It, it just goes on and on. There are yeah. a lot of veteran service organizations helping out. Okay. We're going to talk a little bit more about some of the other things that's going on. But right now, I, want to, um, I know you wanted to bring up about the regatta. What's sure. the formal name of it, and how long has it been in existence? And, again, your participation in that. Yeah, so um, the uh, Nakoa Wounded Warrior Canoe Regatta, we're about to uh, have our 10th anniversary this coming August. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in 2009, some visionary folks, uh, including Judge Kubo, who's still a mm -hmm. co-chair, yeah. um, and uh, Gervin Miyamoto uh, out of the Marshall's, U.S. Marshal's Office and others um, got together with the Honolulu Pearl Canoe Club, uh, the Outrear Canoe Club, mm -hmm. and uh, they started this regatta mainly to bring awareness to the fact that we have wounded warriors here. Yeah. And if you think about 2009, one of the greatest concerns was employment right. uh, back then following mm -hmm. the financial crisis. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that uh, has evolved over the years. Um, it's now uh, bigger than it has ever been before. Mm -hmm. uh, we've uh, added a uh, warrior and wellness, um, uh, health, and, uh, health and wellness I'm sorry, Warrior and Family right. Health and Wellness Symposium okay. up at Schofield. And uh, that day at Schofield is the 14th of uh, August. Mm -hmm. And then on the 15th, we're going to have a reception at mm -hmm. the Royal Hawaiian Resort. Uh, and then the 17th will be the regatta. Yeah. Um, this year, we're going to have 100 teams in the regatta. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll be mixed between a Wounded Warrior and Family Division, which will be about a half, mm -hmm. uh, the Combat Veteran Division, and the veteran division. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I know with uh, the participation in the regatta and some of the other uh, activities out there anyhow, um, actually with, there's a lot of wounded warriors who, again, unfortunately have suffered a lot of loss of a limb or two or even more and uh, are participating to help support, I guess, their fellow the wounded warriors also. Um, what are some of the people that have in the past, how how involved or how much participation do you get from those actual w wounded warriors, you know, in these in this regatta? Yeah, as I said, we have the uh, wounded warrior and family division, mm -hmm. uh, which was first focused on the uh, the warrior transition units up at Schofield and Kaneohe. Yeah, um, but that's evolved to include a lot more veterans now that the the war has gone on and on for years, um, and uh, so we've also involved their families. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, several severely wounded warriors um, uh, in, in, in different categories of wounds. Mm -hmm. Most of our Hawaii wounded warriors uh, suffer from post-traumatic stress right. or suffer from traumatic brain injury. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, their families suffer from that as well. Mm -hmm. And so we try to bring their families into this healing journey as well. Yeah. Um, we do have several uh, amputees here in Hawaii um, and, uh, and we also bring in, uh, other, sponsored by other nonprofits. Mm -hmm. uh, there, are, there are wounded warriors that come from the mainland, yeah. uh, as well as Australia and uh, the UK yeah. for the regatta. Yeah. yeah, you mentioned dependents. A lot of people aren't aware, or you know, to, to the extent that us in the military or veterans community, that the effect that it has on dependents also, you know, uh, the stress that they go under, you know. And, um, you know, as far as support systems that possibly may be out there for them also. Uh, what, are, what are some of the things that you envision for, that you see happening with the regatta and, um, yeah, the future? And how can the public really help as far as supporting? I mean, besides financially, is there any way that someone who's not been affiliated with the military can, you know, support the, um, the effort? Sure. A um, couple of different directions to go there. Uh, first, our health and wellness symposium this year uh, up at Schofield is going to be focused on the caregiver. Okay. So those who have a wounded warrior at home mm -hmm. um, may want to attend that uh, if, if they're carrying the burden for the yeah. family. Um, we also include uh, the spouses in the, 
in the reception that we have. Mm -hmm. We invite uh, 100 wounded warriors and spouses to come to the reception that we host. Mm. Um, and, uh, and of course, families are involved in the regatta as well. A wounded warrior, uh, his or her spouse, and three children could be a team. Yeah. Okay, so we have a lot of children. We have a youth honor heat mm -hmm. uh, during the uh, regatta for the children of our fallen, the children of our wounded. Mm -hmm. um, I should say, too, that we not only have families of our wounded, we also f have families of our fallen. Right. And uh, our mission for the regatta uh, is to honor and support our wounded and their families and the families of our fallen. Yeah. Um, so we do include uh, about 50 Gold Star family members mm -hmm. at the reception. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we're working on trying to uh, provide a substantial amount in scholarships for Gold Star family children um, going to school next year. Okay. Well, a little bit more about that program. How does yeah. that work for the, um, um, the children of the Gold Star families? Yeah, so uh, just today is mm -hmm. the uh, window has opened for applications uh, for the uh, Gold Star Scholarship. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, named after um, one of our uh, soldiers from Hawaii here uh, who was uh, killed in war. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, the, the title of the scholarship is the Private First Class J.R. Salvacion Memorial Scholarship. Right. Um, we uh, are hopeful this year in the 10th anniversary to step up the amount that mm -hmm. we will be able to, to dedicate to that. We have uh, Ed and Juliet Jessen out of Alexandria, Virginia have offered to match mm -hmm. whatever monies we raise mm -hmm. uh, for, towards that cause. And so we're hopeful to put $30,000 out this year yeah. in scholarships. We think we'll have between eight to 10 applicants. Yeah. Well, with the regatta and certain other activities going on, this is something that, um, across the country like a reciprocal thing where you may have another event going on in other parts of the country where you may have people from Hawaii that go there to help support that and vice versa. Is that accurate or? Uh, well, they're not exactly um, affiliated, but of course there are. I mean, the spirit. I, they could, I have to give a shout out to Gary Sinise and the, and the oh, yeah. uh, Sinise, Gary Sinise Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, he, uh, and, and of course, uh, Tragedy Assistance Program for Survivors yeah. run uh, by, by uh, uh, Bonnie Carroll, um, they invite our wounded, uh, I'm sorry, our Gold Star families to participate in all kinds of events mm -hmm. on the mainland and yeah. they pay for everything. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there are other things going on mm -hmm. and candidly I hope that uh, what we're doing here in Hawaii mm -hmm. is uh, to honor and support our wounded and their families, right. families of our fallen, mm -hmm. but I hope too that it sends the message to our active duty and National Guard, mm -hmm. that should something happen to them, yeah. that a community somewhere will mm -hmm. be there, will not forget them. Yeah, I uh, think that's very important because when you're serving your country, you'd like to know that if, God forbid, anything does happen, you know, that there is going to be support for your survivors or, you know, for yourself if you need rehabilitation. I know that uh, there are a lot of activities going on here on Oahu. Throughout the state, are there any similar things that's going on? Like sometimes because of... Uh, financial restrictions or whatever, you know, the, um, the participants or uh, the organizations are not able to have them come here to Oahu. Is there anything else that's going on in any part of the state or that is similar, but maybe of a smaller venue or? So I'm not, I'm not particularly aware. <laughs> okay. I do try to follow, but yeah. I, I do know we've had uh, the Warrior Games uh, mm -hmm. here and the trials for the Warrior Games up at Schofield and, and elsewhere. Yeah. Um, those are more government-sponsored mm -hmm. uh, events, um, but our warriors can get involved in them. Yeah. Uh, the Wounded Warrior Project has activities going on all the time. Mm -hmm. um, Team Red, White, and Blue has hikes and all kinds of other adventures. Oh. So, so if, if, if a warrior wants to get involved, mm -hmm. um, there are plenty of opportunities here in Hawaii okay. uh, to get involved. Okay, we'll follow up on that, but what we're going to do is take a short break. And uh, Hawaii in uniform, please stay tuned. Hey, aloha, and welcome to the Think Tech Hawaii studios. I'm Andrew Lang, the host of Security Matters Hawaii. I'm airing here every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Hawaii time, and I'm trying to bring this community information, security information specifically, that will help you live a safer life, help keep our community safer, and help keep our, our businesses safer. Um, so join me, because security matters. Aloha. 
Aloha. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Okay, we're back with Hawaii in uniform, and again, my host, I mean, my host. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Calvin Griffin, and I got uh, Mr. Matthew McCarville, and uh, we'll continue our conversation about what's happening here in Hawaii with the regatta, and uh, what other things did you want to touch on that the public should be aware of? Yeah, I guess uh, first I should start from the beginning that mm -hmm. our Hawaii chapter of the Association of the United States Army is mm -hmm. the host for the NACOA okay. uh, events. Uh, the regatta itself is a kickoff event to Duke's Ocean Fest. Mm. Um, and, you know, the, the surfing competitions right. and other water sport competitions. Mm. Uh, and we are the kickoff event for that. Uh -huh. um, uh, if you uh, are covered by uh, Ocean Paddler, so there's an episode every year that Ocean Paddler does mm -hmm. uh, regarding uh, the regatta. Yeah. Um, although AUSA is the host, um, it is part of the greatest pride we have in putting this on as mm -hmm. AUSA is that it's a, just a, a huge collaboration of the veteran service organizations. Mm -hmm. And this is unique to the country. Right. We have all these veteran service organizations that come together to make mm -hmm. this happen. Um, particularly Wounded Warrior Project, uh, they are a, not only our presenting sponsor, mm -hmm. they also uh, arrange for travel and lodging for our wounded warriors to come from the outer islands mm -hmm. to participate with mm -hmm. their spouses. Um, we have um, Access Surf Hawaii uh, provides all the equipment and expertise to set up uh, the special seating and to get our wounded warriors into the, the uh, canoes as needed mm -hmm. and out uh, and do that respectfully. Right. Um, we have uh, the uh, Honolulu Pearl Canoe Club and the Outrear Canoe Club who are just amazing in making it all happen. Mm -hmm. uh, Warriors at Ease is, uh, is there. Um, the West Oahu Veterans Center, Schofield Barracks Army Health Clinic, mm -hmm. uh, TMC, Team Red, White, and Blue, mm -hmm. and I'm probably missing, oh, and Operation Ward 57 yeah. from the mainland. Okay. So it's a collaborative effort. Um, we have 200 volunteers mm -hmm. involved in pulling this thing off. Mm -hmm. um, I like to think it's the, probably the premier sporting event for wounded warriors and families yeah. in Hawaii. So you mentioned 200 volunteers. Are most of these individuals um, affiliated with the military? Because I think it's important that a lot of people who may not be familiar, I mean, here in Hawaii, there's the military all around and with the history here. But I think it's important that the public really get to know these people up close and personal, you know, to really get an idea of the sacrifices that were made. So as far as if there's somebody out there that um, for whatever reason is not familiar with um, the military community and they, but they want, you know, public, they're spirited to what they want to get involved, is there a way for the, who, can they contact somebody to get involved either financially or again being, yep. you know, boots on ground as we say at the event to help support it? So our website uh -huh. uh, is nakoaregatta.org. Okay. Uh, right now, the team registrations are not live, mm -hmm. so people can't register yet to paddle. Yeah. Uh, that'll happen on 1 May. Mm -hmm. But if anyone would want to uh, reserve tickets for the reception, mm -hmm. they can do that. Um, and the reception provides, uh, and part of its purpose, mm -hmm. is to put our civilian community face-to-face -face with our wounded and our Gold Star families. Right. So they can not only have a sticker on their car, mm -hmm. but they can actually get to know the people that came from their right. community mm -hmm. and are now back in their community. Yep. Um, so the reception would be the number one way to do that. Yep. Uh, and secondly, I, I have to laugh a little bit. My wife, mm -hmm. uh, Karen, is the uh, volunteer coordinator, mm -hmm. and I try not to step on her plan for volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, 80 of our 200 come from the canoe clubs okay. that support what's going on in the water. Yep. Uh, we have some specialty requirements for medical professionals. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then we really have on an invitation-only basis the other, invita the other volunteers to fill the other spaces right. for the volunteers. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Um, but I think it's important that we have uh, civilian 
folks to get our military, yeah. uh, to get to know our military through this process. Okay. <clears throat> One little question that's out there in left field a little bit. Um, with the, I know that with the um, Operation Enduring Freedom and a few other military operations, we've had allies from other countries that have participated. Is there anything similar that, um, question do they have going on in their countries, but is there anything like an international or a coalition type of uh, recognition that brings yeah. uh, wounded warriors from different parts of the, you know, the world together at any point? Yeah, um, I know that the Wounded Warrior Project does some cooperative um, uh, events mm -hmm. uh, with uh, the UK. Yeah. Um, our involvement of uh, the uh, UK warriors and New Zealand, well, we're thinking maybe New Zealand, mm -hmm. uh, but UK and Australian warriors, mm -hmm. wasn't really so much to make this an international regatta. Yeah. Uh, its purpose, though, and, and, and the reason we welcomed it is that these are allies that fought shoulder to shoulder with us on the battlefield. Right. And um, to invite them to share um, side by side in this healing process mm -hmm. just seemed like a, a very appropriate thing to do. Yeah. Um, so we're trying to expand and have a team from New Zealand uh, this year as well. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. Um, but uh, no, we're very proud to have our allies. And along that, I, I have to tell you, none of this happens without uh, the folks that donate to make, to, to make this happen. Yeah. Uh, I mentioned Wounded Warrior Project as our presenting sponsor. Mm -hmm. um, OBX Tech uh, out of Alexandria, Virginia okay. is a, a major sponsor, mm -hmm. uh, as is uh, American General mm -hmm. um, out of Michigan. And, uh, and here in Hawaii and Honolulu, we have uh, dyna dynamic planning and, and response. Mm -hmm. uh, those are our major sponsors, right. but then we have several other at, at lower level uh, sponsorships and any individual can make any donation they'd like to to, okay. to help us do this. You mentioned Judge Kubo uh, being a co-sponsor, um, I mean co- The co-chair. Co-chair, yes. okay, yeah. Because with uh, a lot of people may not be aware fully, like with uh, Judge Kubo being uh, involved in this, it's also he's um, spearheaded and really expanded the Veterans Treatment Court here in Hawaii which a lot of people may not be aware of. It's about, uh, you know, veterans who have had uh, run-ins with the authorities or whatever, you know, and they're given a second chance. They're not given a pass or nothing like that. It's a very stringent program they have to go through. But, um, yeah, Judge Kubo has been very, um, he's community-spirited. Uh, he's one of the top people, I mean, that's it's all the dedication to the veterans and the community. Uh, he seems to be one of those indiv individuals that really go above and beyond the call of duty to make sure the programs that he's supporting or involved in are, you know, something that's really, you know, outstanding. And I think that, you know, when you talk with what you're doing also, um, it shows the caliber of people we have in the community who really care. Well, it's very, very humbling to yeah. be a co-chair alongside Judge Ed Kubo. Yeah. Um, yeah, his work with the Veteran Treatment Court um, and with veterans in general, very mm -hmm. humbling. Yeah. So, and were it not for him and a handful of others, there yeah. wouldn't be a Nakoa Wounded Warrior Canoe Regatta. No, I tell you know, I try to remind the public every once in a while that we do have a lot of unsung heroes, people who are not looking for accolades or anything like that, who quietly do what they need to do to uh, make sure that um, the um, obligation that we have to our military and our veterans, you know, is fulfilled. You know, sometimes there's some shortcomings systemically, but uh, I think that uh, those who really care, they pick up the slack when uh, there are those issues that come up that uh, need to be addressed anyhow to support our people anyhow. Uh, I, were there any other issues, major issues that you want to discuss or um, get out there to the public? Well, again, if anybody would like to make a donation mm -hmm. towards uh, the uh, regatta, towards the scholarships for Gold Star families, yeah. uh, they can do so at uh, nakoaregatta.org. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be posting more information. There are plenty of photos from previous years on our Facebook page, mm -hmm. Nakoa Regatta. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what is it? What is your future involvement? Are you going to stay on for another 50 years as co-chair or what? I think we take it one, one year at a time. Uh, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I don't have plans on going anywhere, but uh, yeah. you never know what, what tomorrow will bring. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Um, again, um, there's so many different things going on. There's spider webs throughout the community with the different organizations. But is there any other organizations you want to mention that are doing anything that... Um, are just really outstanding that don't want to toot their own horn that, you know? Well, uh, I think uh, the, the one that comes to mind, I'm on the board mm -hmm. of Access Surf Hawaii. Okay. Okay, and their Wounded Warrior Day at the Beach program 
as, long, as well as their regular program yeah. for uh, people with disabilities. Uh, it's just absolutely phenomenal. Mm. Uh, just to, to go to a day at the beach oh, uh, with Access Surf could be life changing. Yeah, um, it's absolutely amazing. So a day at the surf, what is that location? Is it just any particular beach or location, or is it? Um... Most of the time, the day at the beach is out at White Plains. Okay. Yeah. Um, you might have known it as Barber's Point from yeah. the old days. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Yeah, they got a nice beach out there also. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. So what, some of the things you want to, high points you want to touch on, some of the things we may have missed or anything that, again, that we didn't um, cover? Well, I will tell you, if you're a paddler, you'll mm -hmm. probably be frustrated with the uh, Nakoa Wounded Warrior Canoe Regatta mm -hmm. because I don't know of too many uh, canoe regattas where we stop the race in the middle. Oh, yeah. Okay, and what we do uh, for the Nakoa Regatta is uh, at 11 o'clock, mm -hmm. the race is stopped. Mm -hmm. And we do a presentation of Gold Star medallions mm -hmm. to our Gold Star families mm -hmm. paddling in the race. And each of the medallions are engraved with the names of the fallen, mm -hmm. of their fallen, mm -hmm. on the back of it. Okay. One thing, again, that a lot of people may not be aware of what Gold Star families are or what that, what that symbolizes anyhow or represents. If you can give us a brief explanation of that. As, as you might imagine, I get asked that question a lot, yeah. and it's my great privilege to mm -hmm. explain to folks who don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, that uh, our Gold Star families, um, a tradition started in World War I, mm -hmm. uh, for those who are killed in combat, mm -hmm. and now we've expanded that to include those who, killed on act who die mm -hmm. on active service. Mm -hmm. Okay, it, their family is considered a Gold Star family. Yeah. It started with Gold Star mothers, and now uh, each of the services have recognized that spouses mm -hmm. and children and brothers and sisters uh, are also part of that loss and share yeah. that enduring burden. Okay. I don't want to get towards the end on, on a down note, but one thing I do have to ask anyhow, I know what we're talking about, there is unfortunately an uh, issue with uh, suicides in the military, things of that nature anyhow. Uh, are those individuals, even though they served honorably and everything else, are they also recognized as part of the program or if, well, if you uh, don't want to comment on it, I understand. No, uh, it, is, it is an issue we need to address. Yeah. Uh, the, I think our military services need to confront it uh, more yeah. uh, openly. Right. Um, if we have veterans, combat veterans, who commit suicide with clear records of post-traumatic stress, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes those are recorded as uh, uh, service-related related. Yeah. deaths. Okay. Uh, we even awarded one of the scholarships to our Gold Star children right. last year was uh, the... Uh, son yeah. of, of a, a soldier who had taken his own life. Okay. So, yeah. Yes. All answer right. is yes. We're down to the wire anyhow. I didn't want to end on the down note, but I think it's still positive and way that they were out there anyhow. But I want to thank you for your service, what you do. We'll do a follow-up. Welcome back anytime. Um, and all I can say is thank you for tuning into the program. God bless and until that time.